excited to be here with you all today. So my name is Ben Christensen, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Cambium Carbon. Really excited to dive in and share a little bit more about what we're doing today, and so excited to engage with you all in this space. So what we do, and we're going to zoom in on this, we're going to talk about this a lot, is we use technology to make local scalable. Before we do that, a few questions for folks. This is a call and response situation, so we'd like to hear some engagement. Can anybody tell me what this is? The first one of these was leafless, and it originated actually in New York State 385 million years ago. Anybody? Uh, Trees? I hear that? Yeah, nice. All right, great. That's what it looked like, kind of a weird looking thing. So if you can actually see one of these from your window, it's scientifically proven to have reduced stress, boost productivity, improved job satisfaction, and more attention. Anybody, what is it? Trees, yeah, yeah, that's really good. These can help save about $5 billion per year in our cities through reduced energy costs. Anybody? Trees, very good, very good. Over 75 million people annually are aided in finding a version of love in cities across the US by? It's Tinder, folks. Like, <laughs> trust your instincts on this one. But trees do a lot, and we're gonna talk a lot about trees. We're gonna dive in and talk more about wood. But first, I wanna talk a little bit about why we do what we do and why we started Cambium Carbon. So that story for me is really summed up in this photo in a lot of ways. So that's me, um, that pale little baby um, right there <laughs> sitting on my dad's lap um, in the forest in rural New Mexico. Um, so there's a few things that are really important about the start of my story is my dad is uh, many things. He was a stay-at-home dad, he's a veteran, he's an artist, he's a musician, and he was a woodworker. He's a carpenter, um, somebody who spent a ton of time uh, in the space working construction. I grew up in the shop with him, um, so I spent a ton of time in that space, and some of my first, uh, most connected memories to him are in that space building a stool so I could stand up on the countertops, and he helped me build a heart-shaped box for my first girlfriend. So it was you know, a space that was really important for us. The other thing that my dad and I used to do so we like to walk around. Um, we would walk around in the woods, and I grew up in this town of about 200 people, so super small, out in the woods. And something I saw from a really young age is those trees, that tree in the background of that photo right there, this pinyon pine, got hit by bark beetles in the early 2000s. And so I watched these forests that I cared so much about get decimated um, by something that was really induced by climate change. My mom is a scientist, and she helped me understand that connection really, really early on. And so I knew from the beginning of my life that my life's work was addressing climate change as much as possible. And what I really care about with that, and what we're gonna talk about more today, is two things. Scale, we have to go about this problem in really big ways, but that starts in really small ways. And the second is doing it in a way that's people first. We have this opportunity to rewrite our economic system. We have to go after that in a way that is more just and more equitable than what we have today. So what do we do? Let's dive in a little bit more on what we do at Cambium. So first, some ground and context. Supply chains are broken, right? They're disconnected, they're inefficient, they're unreliable, and as we know, they're a huge source of our emissions, contributing to about you know, a huge amount, and if they were a, a greenhouse gas emitter in a country themselves, they'd be about six in the, in the world. So it's a huge, huge volume. And wood is a big contributor to that. Our traditional wood supply chain starts with this extractive model where trees are cut down. Generally, again, it's more complicated than this, but generally in the US, Europe, South America, we ship them really far, often to across an ocean to faraway factories. They're then shipped back to distributors, and then they're shipped again to secondary distributions or retailers. And then ultimately, they might finally reach our door, our chairs, the buildings that we live in. There's these crazy, non-tech-enabled, non-environmentally efficient supply chains that really drive their wood products industry currently. And that contributes to about $54 billion worth of furniture being imported in the US every year, and about 78% of domestic household furniture being imported. That means we're moving a really heavy good across oceans. Doesn't make a ton of sense. And so what we're really here to do today, this slide looks a little bit strange. Um, you can see underneath that, um, there's a map of our 220 different suppliers, and we're really trying to build the supply chains of the future. So what we're going after is instead of those long, extended global supply chains, one where we can create nationally local supply chains. Supply chains where if you're a large company, you can still access products at scale that are price efficient and that are way more environmentally efficient, but also local, that are produced locally and can help hit really reshore you know, workforce and jobs back into our cities. 
And so that's what we're really focused on building, um, and I've spent a ton of time doing that. Before we talk a little bit more about how we do that and where we're going, everyone take a second, close your eyes, and think about a tree that you care about. Where is it? Who's there with you? What did it feel like to be connected to that place? We all have some space like that that has meant something for us. And the question is what happens to that tree when it dies? It's not a question we often think about. But usually what happens is we take that tree, cut it up into little tiny pieces, and we spread it out perfectly so it can off-gas into methane as fast as possible, and all that captured carbon goes straight back up into the atmosphere. It's usually what happens to trees and our cities and our backyards when they die is they get turned into mulch. The other disposal options are being sent to landfill, which is crazy, or being burnt. It's usually not the best way to use our resources is by burning them. So that happens to about 36 million trees a year in the US. That's crazy, right? It's an unbelievable amount of trees. And the economic value of that is mind-blowing. That's about three to four billion dollar board, three to four billion board feet, massive amounts of money. And the craziest part of it all is we pay to throw it away. We spend almost a billion dollars a year as a country getting rid of this. And money literally grows in trees and we're sending it into the landfill. It doesn't make any sense. This is what it looks like. Yards around the country, disposal yards, burn piles, landfills filled with wood that we could capture, could use for better uses, but we don't. We can do better than that. So this is what we're really trying to build at Cambium Carbon, is a circular economy that really connects wood waste streams, so those initial you know, production components, so tree care companies, the people who would actually cut down that wood, to local processing. So instead of taking it to a landfill or instead of just mulching it, how can you capture it? How can those local processors then use that wood and use it at scale to connect it into large buyers? And our whole model is really focused on reinvesting back into communities as well and creating a truly circular supply chain. So the way we think about it, I mentioned this earlier, is nationally local. So each of those 220 dots you know, across the country are our core suppliers and they exist in cities. And the way that we really think about a transformative model here is each city as a production hub and one in which um, you know, we're able to access tree salvage, connected into processing and installation within 10 miles instead of 10,000. We're talking with a client uh, last week who takes, was taking down trees in Pennsylvania, shipping them to Italy, and then shipping that processed wood back. Doesn't make sense. We have an amazing program with the city of Philadelphia. We're working to set up supply chains um, in that space. We can do it all a lot more locally. And so we call our wood carbon smart wood. We think it's um, you know, a really exciting brand. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that at the end. And it really means three things. So first is it's diverting waste and it's creating a ton of environmental impact from that. Again, where do these trees come from, right? Trees get old. You know, we need to take down trees. They're a living thing. At the end of their life, they should have a place to go that is lasting and not wasted. When we develop new buildings, when we expand our cities, um, we're cutting down trees um, as well. Also diseases you know, contribute to a lot of this. And then it's also it's kind of hard to be a tree in a city, you know, especially with climate change. It's hard life. So there's a lot of different things that contribute um, to you know, trees coming down. And so all of our wood is captured from trees that were not intended to be harvested. And so think about like parks, you know, utility lines, backyards, you know, the places that we don't manage for traditional forestry. And that's a huge swath of the country. The second thing that's really important about Carbon Smart Wood is that it's processed locally. So we care a ton about enabling local supply chains, about reshoring manufacturing, and we're really focused on working with workforce development partners to create access to new green jobs and working with cities and with partners there to, again, get more folks into the trades and connected there. And then the last part of it is we're a public benefit corporation. We care a lot about tree planting. Uh, we're particularly focused on tree equity and working with partners to engage um, with communities who have traditionally been left out of urban forestry. If you look at maps of redlining and tree canopy, they almost completely match. And it's a pretty easy way to tell how quickly an area has gentrified. And so that's one of the big things that we are really focused on is again, working with communities in that space. So that's what Carbon Smart Wood is. And if we do this, if we do this at scale, 
It's a massive, massive climate solution. Um, so it's about 1.2 gigatons globally, huge, huge opportunity to divert wood waste and create a massive climate solution. Something that's also really exciting about it, we can do this in the near term. Like we don't need some crazy new piece of technology. We need to care about waste in a new and different way. And something really cool is you can create amazing, beautiful products out of wood that would have gone to landfill. So you can see in the background here, this amazing wall, uh, which our team in Baltimore did um, for uh, an office building in DC, all of that wood would have been sent to landfill or mulched or wasted. It can be a beautiful installation um, you know, in a building. And so sort of in conclusion um, with what we're building, and then I'll talk more about um, you know, how we're really building our brand, you know, we're working with lots of companies today and it's really exciting. We also need all of your help in growing this movement. So the big exciting thing is wood can be used for anything, right? Like we use wood in so many different pieces. You'll see the cutting boards um, that we've made for this session um, out um, that host food later today, but you can use it for a ton of different things. So we're working with Patagonia um, when they build new stores. Um, we just did a store in Baltimore um, with them, getting some fixtures with locally sourced Baltimore wood, produce there, all these amazing things. National Geographic just bought tables. OFS, a really large furniture company. Commercial furniture, probably haven't heard of them, but you've for sure sat on a chair of theirs. We're going to get wood into their production lines. CBRE, massive developer, working with them to get wood into architectural elements, flooring, and non-structural elements of their buildings. Microsoft, room and board, and the list is a lot longer, but we really are looking to continue to expand that and grow that movement. So we're gonna talk about um, today and presenting our challenge a little bit more clearly here is how do we continue to build out the Carbon Smart Wood brand? And I think this is a great question for all of us when we think about creating movements, but how do you create something that really connects people? How do you create a brand that is clear, that is unique, and that can drive change? Because the underlying, under the hood of this solution is something really exciting. Again, something that's a climate solution, something that's a social solution, something really powerful, but we need to make it accessible. We need to make it exciting and we need to bring it out. So the way that I think about approaching our brand, and again, how do we really create connection here, is trees and our wood connects us. So we have this really amazing um, example of that. We're in this picture here. You can see Dr. King on the day of the I Have a Dream speech. And behind him on the National Mall are a number of elm trees. And one of those trees came down last year. It was old, it was getting sick, and it was destined for landfill. We were actually able to work with that contractor, save that wood. We now have that wood um, at our shop in Baltimore, and we're working with the National Civil Rights Museum to help connect that tree back in with a local artist who's doing a story, and it's gonna be in an installation forever. And the coolest part of that for me is literally all those people who were breathing that day, that got absorbed in that wood. Like that is connection right there. That is like real connectivity there. Same thing, we have a tree that President Eisenhower planted on you know, the White House lawn. We have Jason Mraz's avocado trees, which was cooler like in 2007, but it's still cool, <laughs> you know? If anybody knows Jason Mraz, like super cool, love those songs. <laughs> Not taking shots, it's great. Um, but the point here is there's these big sort of iconic trees that connect us. There's also all of these trees that connect us to us. Like think about the tree that you were imagining earlier. Imagine if you could have a table or that could be in your house and you could remember that like, hey, that was a tree I grew up on. You know, that's something that's so important to us. So what we're really focused on in building, and this gets a little bit more tactical here, is how do we build the first brand in lumber? I don't know if any of you have bought a two by four, but there's no brand. You buy it based on species, finishing, some of the different qualities there. Really trying to build the first brand. And this is something that we've seen across a lot of different, you know, industries, food, textiles, and other standards as well. And we're also really trying to focus, um, again, on connecting in and building something that really has a movement behind it, growing and scaling that and feeling that connectivity, something that, again, we've seen in lots of different spaces. In the wood space, there's certifications, and there's a number of different ones, SFI, but sort of the leading one is FSC. I think FSC is great, I think net positive um, overall. I also think it doesn't go far enough. You know, it's audit driven, and what it is, is it's a certifying entity that says, hey, you cut down wood somewhere, usually halfway across the world, and we're gonna tell you that that was done sustainably. I was actually talking to somebody um, at this conference yesterday who was mentioning that they stopped using FSC wood because they found out that some of those audits were missed and that trees actually weren't being you know, harvested in, a, in an effective way. And one of the big things for us is you need that, you need the third party, you need a certification, 
when you don't know where your wood came from, when you can't tell you which block it came from, when you can't tell you which local producer touched it. And there's such a big opportunity to connect those dots and really move forward there. And we can do better with that, right? Like we can do better. What if you knew your wood was diverted from a landfill? What if you knew it created local jobs? What if you knew it reinvested in tree planting and maintenance? What if you knew and could see transparently the data on all of that, the impact data, the stories behind it, and um, that it was also connected to your city? Like we all have cities that we care about and we feel affiliation to, we feel connection. It's an amazing way to really move that forward. And so our go-to-market strategy and what we're really pushing on, and this is where we need your help in getting more tactical and growing and expanding in our session, and I really hope that you all will join us um, in getting us to the next level here, is thinking about, again, scaling this material type. So you can think about Carbon Smart Wood as something similar to sort of a Tencel. So Lensing is the parent company, Tencel is the material type, and then all of these brands are using sort of this material, sort of like a Gore-Tex you know, equivalent there as well. Same thing for us, Cambium Carbon Parent Company, Carbon Smart Wood, you know, the material type that we're building, and then ultimately really getting that to customers. And what's exciting there, and this is what gets me really excited, is we're seeing lots of customers who love this, who want to put this brand out there. So this is one of our partners, Arbor Wood Co. They've committed to using 25% of our wood by 2025. That is huge impact, right? You know, really, really material impact. And the exciting part of that is if you look at that building, you know, in the background of that photo, they're putting our wood into that building they're also connecting it to the architect, to the designer, to the building owner, to all the people who go in that. And this is something that I think is so true about materials more broadly is we all want to be more connected to the goods that we engage with. And whenever we put wood into a building, that's what people talk about. That's the people who, you know, at the front desk talk about, hey, look at this, you know, this came from here. And, and those stories really, really matter. So in conclusion, I just want to say thank you all. Really appreciate it. Think about the wood in your life and where it came from. And I really appreciate your time.